Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Michael McTeer, and this is Murder in Michigan. Larry and Danny Rains. May 30th, 1964. A hitchhiker near Kalamazoo, Michigan, was picked up by 30-year-old Gary Smock. Smock, a much-loved school teacher from the east side of the state, was passing through Kalamazoo, Michigan on his way home. The hitchhiker produced a pistol and forced Smock out of the driver's seat and into the trunk. After several attempts to escape, Smock was taken out of the trunk and tied up. His assailant then proceeded to execute Smock with two gunshots to the back of the head. But the hitchhiker had a big mouth and told several acquaintances about his despicable deed. He would be arrested for the heinous act only six days later. Larry Raines admitted to killing Gary Smock and four other victims that had not previously been connected to him. He confessed to killing 33-year-old Charles Snyder, 21-year-old Vernon LaBerne, a man from Las Vegas, and a man from Kentucky. These four seemingly unconnected murders had one thing in common. All four were working at a gas station when they were killed. In his confession, Larry said his motive for was robbery and that he planned to kill himself after he indulged in food and drink. But despite this plan, he never actually tried to kill himself any time after any of the murders. Examinations by psychiatrists would determine that Larry had a subconscious hatred of gas stations due to his father's abandonment of the family for another woman and a job as a gas station attendant in Florida. It was also revealed that before his killing spree, he had been involved with a 23-year-old woman at the age of 13, he had been kicked out of the army for violently attacking other soldiers, and that he had attempted to commit suicide when his childhood sweetheart refused to marry him. His life was only spared due to the police officer responding to a wellness check. Range trial started at September 29th and would conclude on October 8th. He would be found guilty of the murder of Gary Smock and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Brothers, not partners. Through all of this, Danny Raines seemed to be fairly well adjusted. He married a woman named Kathy that both Raines brothers had once dated. Danny and Kathy would have two kids together, but after Larry's conviction, the marriage turned bad. And in November of 1968, four years after his brother was sentenced to prison, Danny Raines, Larry's older brother, decided to begin his own killing spree. 18-year-old Dorothy Kings would be taken at gunpoint in her own car. Her assailant, Danny Raines, planned to rape and presumably kill her on the outskirts of Battle Creek, Michigan. But all did not go as planned, and when Danny took wrong turn outside Kellogg Community College, Dorothy took advantage of the confusion and leapt from the car to make her escape. After finding Rain's own car in the parking lot of the pharmacy where Dorothy was employed, the police arrested him. Dorothy would later identify him as his attacker, as her attacker. Danny Rains would be found guilty of felonious assault and sentenced to four years imprisonment. His estranged wife would divorce him before he could be paroled in 1972, but Rains would still return to Kalamazoo where he would get a job, of all things, as a gas station attendant. It was not long after that, Danny befriended 15-year-old Brent Coster. Coster had grown up with a schizophrenic mother and an alcoholic father. It was not long before Danny Raines became Brent's role model and mentor. July 5, 1972. After grooming Coster to be his accomplice, the two of them abducted yet 19-year-old Chicago natives Claudia Bidstrup and Linda Clark near an I-94 gas station. Raines and Costa would proceed to rape and murder each of the girls before wrapping their bodies in a blanket and placing them in their car. A few miles deep into the forest outside Galesburg, Michigan, Raines would park the car and set it ablaze. It would be two full weeks before a motorcycle enthusiast came across the burned out car and the remains of the two girls. August 1972 18-year-old hitchhiker Pamela Friernow would be abducted near the campus of Western Michigan University. Raines and Coster would take turns raping Fear Now before ultimately strangling her with a plastic bag. With little to go on, police were stumped. 
at least until Koster's loose lips started talking about the killings to a local prostitute. The prostitute just happened to also be working as a police informant. In his interrogation, Costa would freely admit his involvement in the crimes, but he also told the police that Reigns admitted to him that Reigns had previously killed a young girl back in March. Her name was Patricia Hauck, and she was only 19 years old when she came across Danny Reigns. She did not live to regret the chance meeting, and it would be the real beginning to Reigns' serial killing. August 1973 Charged with four murders, Reigns was only convicted of killing Fearnow and Hauk. For those crimes, he was sentenced to life in prison without the chance of parole. Coster, as part of the plea deal, would be found guilty of the second-degree murder of Linda Clark. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility for parole. Today. At last check, 76-year-old Larry Raines continues to serve out his life sentence as an inmate at the Saginaw Correctional Facility in Saginaw, Michigan. After numerous attempts to be paroled, Brent Coster was finally successful in getting released in September of 2020. He had, been, he had spent 48 years in jail but would start fresh at the age of 64. Danny Raines would die of natural causes while an inmate at the Lakeland Correctional Facility in Coldwater, Michigan in January of 2022. It is also said that the slightest change in history, commonly referred to as the butterfly effect, would change the entire outcome of the world. What if Larry had successfully killed himself? What if that police officer had not responded to that wellness check? His murder spree would never have happened. And if his murder spree never happened, Perhaps Danny never would have turned to murder either. But who knows? Until next time, this is Michael McTeer for Murder in Michigan. Good night, everyone, and stay safe.